following me for the last few years. So this is the third session that I'll be doing under this teacher development program. And unfortunately, this is a follow-up of what we have done in the last two years. So for all who have not done the first two series, some of you have done the framework for teaching with Peggy last year. And uh, then the other group did the lesson development and planning with me last year. So there was a second series. Right? So the third one will be in the classroom itself, what we should be doing, and then how to just grow professionally. Right? So if, for whatever reason, you are not able to follow, either stop me along the way, or get some of these people who have gone through the, at least the framework for teaching, to go through with you. What is this framework? FFT, framework for teaching. Right? I'm not sure you've done that framework, you've done it before. Who else have you done it before? Right? Um, sorry, I can't recall so many, so, many, so many faces, but there are some familiar ones as well. How many of you have just joined the school or going to start next year? Okay, so welcome to this exciting profession. I'm sure you'll find this very exciting place. This, this, this history can you a very exciting place to work in. But at the same time, this is a place for teachers who want to contribute. Teachers who want to grow professionally. Not grow sideways, but grow professionally. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll go through a series of uh, some information and then there will be some exercises for you to do. That in the afternoon, you'll be watching a video of the classroom situation where you will apply your skill in classroom observation and in taking evidence and things like that. Hopefully, at the end of this, you'll be able to at least take down notes of teaching in the classroom. All right, and then taking, using the notes that you've taken, you would interpret, okay? you interpret the level of performance, what needs to be done, what is so good about the lesson, what phrases are going to be given, suggestions for improvement, and things like that. All right. So, first of all, I'd like to get some of your feelings about classroom observation. All of you have been observed teaching the classroom, and some of you have played the role of the observer, of the observer as well. All right? So, first of all, I'd like to get your feelings about your experience being observed. Right? Those of you who have been here for some years, or those of you who have been teaching elsewhere, now, the moment your principal or your head of department tells you, I'm coming to see you tomorrow, what is the first reaction? Excited. Excited. Very happy. Excited. Uneasy. Uneasy. I think the, the common feeling is, oh, what is there to see? All right? There he goes again, you know? It's a, but anyway, it's a once a year affair because they need this to observe us and then put some marks here and there so that they can decide how much bonus we get, how much incre increment we are going to get. Right? But anyway, what else can he tell me about my teaching? And yeah, then this next step is maybe I should teach something I'm familiar with, the students are familiar with so that there will be less problem in the class. What topic would be the easiest topic so that you know, the students will not cause any trouble and I will be able to talk smoothly without any, any pitch or glitch? That is the reaction of a lot of people. I would say a lot, a majority. Right? The moment you hear that somebody is coming to observe you, then you will, first of all, you will try to look at the negative side. Secondly, you will try to do a, a job which you think that will please everybody. 
so that at the end of the day, you can come up with an A, very good. You know, otherwise, at least get an average grade. You want to come up with something like uh, not so good, but you didn't do this, you didn't, you didn't do that, your students did not pay attention, you didn't control the class well, you don't want to get some comments. Correct? Now, why do you have such a thing? And then uh, not happy being observed. No confidence. No confidence, yes, that's one thing. But generally, if you are an experienced teacher, alright, if you happen to be observed and then you have that set of feelings, it is because you find that what is what can this observation do to you? What can it help you? How can it help you? It does not. Nobody likes to be observed as true, but what you say, the second thing is very important because we are, we come in with this wrong concept of observation. Because observation leads to increment, observation leads to criticism, right? Observation leads to getting less bonuses, things like that. Because the purpose of observation and test present context, I'm not saying in a strict case, Generally, in most of the schools, the observations are not serving their purposes. Right? Now, do you, do you think the observer likes to do the observation? Frankly, you don't. Right? Because, but anyway, it's a job they have to do, they do. But imagine the principal having to observe 50 teachers. Uh, before observation, the teacher, the, the teacher will have to be interviewed by the observer. We call it pre-observation conference. Then after that, you go in and sit in the classroom. You will sit there for five minutes. You can't see anything, right? And it is only fair if you sit through the whole lesson. So that will take forty-five minutes at least. Then at the end of it, you are supposed to have a discussion with the teacher again, another minimum half an hour to one hour. So on an average, you can spend at least two hours per teacher for each of the observation. You multiply that by 50 teachers, it's 100 hours of your time. And you're going to do that maybe in the month of November, December, November to December. So you have other things to do, you have parents to attend to, you have to this big boss, questions to answer to the big bosses and things like that. So do you think they like to do it? No. Right? And the other thing is, if they are not trained in this observation, a lot of the time the observers will not want to make too, too much comments, which are sometimes not defensible. And a lot of times the comments made, they know that the feedback they get is behind the back. Tell him to teach us, show us, right? Tell him to teach, show us how, what he would have done in my place. It's easier to say, easier to pass comments, but then if you are in that situation, you think you'll be able to do what is suggested. So, to be, to be safe, a lot of observers will actually, if it is used for this purpose of grading, they will put you in between 65 to 75% if the grade is from 0 to 100. That is very safe. Right? They also want to put you at 95 percent down top of the 95 because that will mean that you get extra bonuses, increment and how do you justify, you know, how do you tell the other people. So this observation so far will say that it is not effective and a lot of people are sort of like turn off the moment they hear this word observation. I mean part of my work, I'm gonna do it, I do it. Now, it was very interesting as well yesterday, one of the groups mentioned that in fact they have been observed every day. The 
students are the one observing us. But it's okay if the students observe us. But why is it so? But if the principals observe us, it's a different view. Now it's all boils down to what is the purpose of observation. When the students observe us, we are thinking, we, all the time we are thinking that we are doing something, this is part of a job, we are helping the students to learn. But if the principal comes and observes us, or the head of departments observes us, we are not sort of doing the sort of work, right? It is like they are trying to find faults. But I hope this is not the case, alright? Now, that is why this observation program is important now. Because especially, I was told by next year, you'll be doing a lot of peer coaching. How do you coach your, your, your peers, your friends, and your colleagues if you do not go into the classroom and see what they do? All right? So but when you go in and see what they are doing, there must be certain instrument that you can use to measure how well they are doing, what, what are some of the things that needs improvement, what are some of the things that you've learned from them you can take away and share with other people. There must be a certain form of instrument that we need to use. There must be a certain system that all of us must agree that this is the system to use. So when I talk about something, the Observing will also know what I'm talking about. You must use the same instrument. For example, if I ask you to measure, I ask you, what is the length of this table? The instrument that you use straight away, you know, we need to use a ruler. And you tell people this is two and a half feet, people straight away know, or two and a half feet meaning something like this long. Right? If you don't have a proper instrument, I tell you this table is two arms length. Whose arm are you using? My short arm or your long arm? Or the baby's arm? Alright? Because the instrument is not known to everybody. And then you are using different language. Arms, length, inches, feet. Whereas feet, inches or centimeters is something all of us know. And is accepted as a common measure. So similarly in the observation of classroom situation, you must come up with something that you can use to talk about your teaching so that everybody knows what you are talking about. The observer knows that when he says certain things, straight away you can get it. Right? So this is the purpose of this observation, uh, classroom observation program that they are going through. And, uh, to be frank, if you want to be able to do this very well, you need to go undergo a workshop of at least three days. You will also have exercises, you know, then recognize this, what this action is interpreted, how each of the action is interpreted. But what we are trying to do here is to prep everything in one day. I'll try to give you the basic, and then using your own experience, try to interpret it. But at the same time, what you need to do next year is you need to start practice using it. Alright? Alright? So, what we intend to do today, at the end of the day, you will be able to write comments, effective comments, appropriate comments about observation. Right? We'll come up with something which all of you are already familiar with, those who have gone through the framework of teaching. Right? What we need to do is to use what you already know, build on it, and come up with an instrument that can be used by all. Okay. And as I said, there isn't enough time for you to practice. So you need to take this next year while you are doing the peer coaching. Start using it. Right. Now, a lot of the times, uh, this is this 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 slide actually I'll show you just now. A lot of the time, when you go, when you when when we think of observations, there are so many negative things we think about.
about it. It is because we do not know what are they looking at. How is this going to measure? What are you looking at? How are you looking at the environment, my behavior? How are you looking at my action in the classroom? How are you measuring it? So these are some of the questions. And because at the end of the day, right, a lot of unhappiness is because we are not happy with the system. It may not be a fair system just because this teacher is closer to you, the teacher buys nasi lemak for you for your breakfast, and then when you observe, you don't dare to say too much because you always think of the nasi lemak. Right? Whether you like it or not, but you have eaten it. Right? Somehow, things like that do happen. So you begin to question, has the assessment been fair? And the other thing is, more important is, has this observation been useful to you as a teacher? Right? Does it actually help me? If it really helps me, then I don't mind being observed. If it does not, it just adds more, more grievances, right? making me feel very uneasy, making me look small. Then I don't think I like to be observed. So we try to move away from that and then try to rectify all this by coming up with a system that can be accepted by all because it is fair, it is something that we can all use and it is something that we know that can help us to improve or at the same time or help our friends to improve so that teachers as we pay you, you people, all of them are very good teachers not just you are the good teacher but Teachers in Sri Kedu are good teachers because they observe one another, they help one another, so that not you don't have only one excellent teacher, you have all excellent teachers. Alright? And similarly, the one observing you or the administrator, right, they must be happy with the instrument, they must be happy with the observation because the observation helps them to do their work as administrators as well. If it does not, it's just add more, more hours to their work, writing this report, file away, put there, use once and then forget about it. What's the point? Just add to your personal file. Right? And then lastly, it, the time that you use to do it must be worth it. A lot of the time we say, too much time spent and too little gain, which is exactly what is happening now. So far, how do you feel about this? Agree or disagree with what I've just said? Yeah. So, you have all these grievances because the present system is flawed. Now all this is partly because the concept of teaching, or the, our, the way we teach, it has changed throughout the years. Right? 30 years ago, the teacher is one who knows all and comes in well prepared and tells you what they know. I tell you, you listen. I tell you, you listen. And you just absorb it. But you don't use that anymore today. The students know more than you. <coughs> but they may not know how to arrange the facts, put them together. We still need to help them to see some information because we are overloaded with information. So which information do you use? Then how do you select the best information and how to draw conclusion? That one we still need to help the students to develop these skills. Right? So you as the teacher now are not the source of information. The internet is there, the encyclopedia is there, right? So many websites. Information is all over the place. So you as a teacher now are not the one sitting there telling. You don't do that anymore. But the observation schedules that we have, most of the most of most of these observations format are based on teacher as a provider of knowledge. Therefore this system, the, the, the things that you look for must also change because the concept of teaching has changed, has evolved.
So the system is you say it's flawed, it's outdated, limited criteria, there are few shared assumptions about good teaching. Right? To you, good teaching means teacher must stop all the time. To the other person, a good teacher is one who dresses up properly. The next one, a good teacher is something that controls the class. So what we want to do is to come up with a common understanding of what is good teaching. Then we work on, if this is good teaching, these are some of the things we have to look at when you observe teaching and help teachers to develop these skills. Alright? And uh, lack of precision in the evaluation. Like, most of the time, I don't know, during my time in the university, when we go out to observe training teachers, some observers give more detailed comments. Some observers don't. Because they themselves do not know what to, what to say. So a lot of the times, I don't know whether those of you who have been trained previously, whether what sort of comments do you get from your lecturers? I've seen colleagues who just write everything is memuaskan, 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 sederhana, boleh di perbaiki, you know things like that. But apa yang memuaskan, apa yang boleh di perbaiki, so they just underline the column. Komunikasi, no communication with student, memuaskan, that's right, memuaskan. What does this memuaskan tell you? Nothing. So when you have that sort of feedback, you're not happy being observed. But for trainee teachers, the less you write, the better, meaning less faults. Because their perception of observation is the people are coming to look at their faults, the spot finding. That means you, the more you write, the more faults they have. And if their colleagues look at, oh, your form is full of comments, that means you have lots of faults. Whereas mine is quite clean, all the mosque. And who will learn more? The one with the memoaskan throughout or the one with the comments on the good behavior, good behavior in the classroom, good action in the classroom, and then what needs to be improved? Which one will learn more? Which one will become more effective as a teacher eventually? The other one, not this memoaskan. So sometimes these teachers, again, they will, if they will progress, they become lecturers for education as well. So when they go out to, to observe, same thing happens when Moscow and Moscow and Moscow. How many of you have that sort of experience been undergoing teacher training and then getting that sort of Moscow comments? Right? How do you feel during the the, 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 the training? The Moscow is the Right? But after that, every time after the the observation, we have a time to talk to our lecturers. Okay, so maybe they don't like to write, they will talk. Okay, and uh, I think we've gone through all this, alright? And at the same time, whether you are beginning teachers or you're whether you're experienced teachers, they use the same method. So, we say that the system is not flawed, but if Observation is going to be really useful for teachers like you, right? Throw away the, assess the assessment for increment as well as for bonuses. Forget about that, right? right? But unfortunately, it's still used for that. But I want you to just forget that for the time being, right? Why not switch this to something which is more useful that will benefit everybody? So if the observation serves these two purposes, number one, help you to be more competent but for the sake of the administrators you also try to implement something for quality insurance then more importantly as you get your commands you are actually learning and the person observing you especially your peer coaching is also learning so when that sort of learning takes place, we say that this is professional learning. Right. So if these observations <coughs> serve these two purposes, and you're happy that they are doing this well, then we should carry on observing our friends, our colleagues. 
right? For the purpose of competency, making our teachers better and better and better. And at the same time, everybody learns. Now, at this point, I want you to recall, those of you who have done curriculum for teaching, what is the purpose of this? What are we driving at? We use this framework for teaching to remember the four domains. The four domains. And then each of the domains will have components. And each of the components will have elements. Now, the framework helps to describe the level of performance. We look at the level of performance. <coughs> there are four levels. The lowest one is remember the analogy that I use. something to do with the swimming, with swimming. A person who does not know how to swim, you throw him at the end, the end of the pool, what happens? Imagine you can't swim. You are thrown to the end of the pool. What do you do? You just say, okay, oh, time has come, I have to die, I die. And just go, oh, what do you do? You struggle to be alive, to survive. All right, you do whatever you can so that you can survive. Now, imagine this happening to a new teacher who has not been trained, or even though having been trained, but entering the classroom for the first time. All right? He or she is trying to swim and survive. And a lot of the things he or she does will be, in terms of the level of performance, will be unsatisfactory. But that will not remain all the time. Because he or she will be learn either through trial and error or getting guidance from other people, be much better. Similarly, in this swimming situation, if you are thrown into the deep end of the pool every day, somehow you survive and climb up next day, somebody throws you in again, you struggle, and then you survive, you climb up. But after one week, I'm sure you know how to swim a little bit, don't you? You notice that if you don't struggle, you try to float, you will float. So you learn along the way. Now when that happens, you are able to float, and then you find that if you kick your feet, you can move. Right? You can swim a little bit. You have some basic knowledge of swimming. You, can, you know if I kick, I have some float, if I can float, and then if I don't struggle, and then I try to move a little bit, I can swim. But I may be using different style, not your crawl or breaststroke or whatever, but maybe dog style, just like dog handling away. But you, you can swim, right? That is when he said that you have the basic. You have the basic skills to swim. So similarly in the classroom, if the teacher can come in and deliver a lesson, it may not be an exciting lesson. Students may not be happy with the way the teachers, but they can teach. They can control them, control a little bit. Then from time to time, you may find somebody trying to be funny, and then he goes, he doesn't know what to do, but then he tries to do something. Right? Then you say basic. That means not doing everything right all the time, but doing something right sometimes. What are the two levels higher up? One of the other two levels, those have done FFT. How many of you have done this? Oh, they're not looking at me. You've done this with Peggy, right? Some of you? What is the next level? Proficient. Proficient means somebody, a teacher going to the classroom, 
can teach and organize, you know, but still a lot of improvement needs to be, to be done, <coughs> right? Still room for improvement. Taking the case of the swimmer, not only he can swim, but he can swim with the right movement. Knows when to turn his face, knows when to, you know, when to dip his hand inside, when to pull, the leg movement, well coordinated, and swim. Right? Not like the first day when you throw him in the pool, he's just struggling to be alive. Now this person can swim. That is the case of this proficient teacher. You ask him to go to the, the classroom to teach, he, can, he knows what to prepare, goes inside and prepare for the head. Control the student, he can finish what he's supposed to teach. Alright, but from time to time there may be a few glitches here and there. But it's okay. Right? Then the next level, the highest level will be one which is distinguished, well known. Alright? The swimmer who is distinguished will be somebody who can swim so well that what he needs to work on is his stamina and his speed. Then after that, he can take part in the Olympics. Alright, maybe just start with the state competition first. Alright, he can swim now, but then now he needs to help to improve. He needs to train to improve his stamina and then his speed, you know, his technique so that he can swim very fast. So similarly, a teacher in that situation is also known as a distinguished teacher. Now our job here, using this, whatever we are doing, observation or whatever, we are actually trying to identify the components or the elements of each of the performance of, of, of each of these uh, elements of this teacher and try to move, identify at which level they are at, then we should give suggestions so that if he is somewhere here, you should try to move him to this level. If it is somewhere here, <coughs> you have to do many things so that this person can move up. And then if they are here, we want them to move up this, to this level. If they are here, we want them to move up higher and higher so that they can become a mentor. Now, if we are going to use our observation for this purpose to help everybody to become very professional, to be very effective, either to learn from it or to share what you have with others, then this observation is useful. The purpose of doing it is worth it. It's worthwhile. The time that you spend is worthwhile. Right? And when this happens, a lot of professional learning is also taking place. Both, both ways. Just to share with you, every time I do this, I learn something new. All right. So as a teacher, you never stop learning. If you if you recall this advertisement in Astro, even now it's a joke about this teacher. Right? What she said. I do not know actually who learns. They learn more or I learn more. Well, it is so powerful. And it's exactly what is happening. If you are going to observe one another and you learn from one another. And when that happens, it's professional learning. You continuously learn. And then as you do that, you move your level of performance higher. So, if you want to come up with something that can be useful for observing teachers in the classroom, then this particular instrument must have certain criteria. Alright? The first one is everybody, this instrument must define what is good teaching. must define what is good teaching. And this definition of good teaching must be something that can be defensible. For example, if somebody argues that, you know, 
Blessing is very important. Blessing is very important. And if a teacher does not come in well dressed, does not cover up to you know the length, I mean, the length of the skirt does not cover up to the knees, I don't think that person is a good teacher. And you say that that is good teaching. Is it defensible? Yes and no. It could, dressing could be one of this, could be one of the things that you want to look for, but it is not the only thing. Right? I'm just giving you very extreme examples. Right? Oh, a good, good teaching means the teacher must be able to speak very loud. Go sit and start shouting. All right? Even the next room can hear what the teacher is saying. So, this, what good teaching is, must be defensible and it must be agreed by all. The teachers themselves, the administrators, then you come up with this blueprint which must give you a very defensible definition of teaching to teach you. Then this instrument must also tell you how, right, to what sort of evidence you collect. You say that this is good teaching. So how do you say that dressing is important? Then how do you collect this evidence? You measure the length of the skirt, let measure the length of the trousers? No. There must be a way to collect the evidence. Right? So the how part is also very important. And this instrument is for making decisions. This decision here, I don't need the bonuses and the increment. There is decisions on this. How to help the teachers to move up. So that the teachers can perform very well. And lastly, the person all right, who is making the observation. All these people making the observation must be trained. <coughs> So now I want you to look at yourself as the observer because under this peer coaching, you are going to play this role. So what you are doing now is you are training yourself so that whatever things you say, your judgment that you make is based on what you can collect, the evidence. So you must be trained in collecting evidence and then from your evidence, what judgment to make, right? The judgment here is to reach level and then followed by suggestions. What suggestion can you make? So if you are not trained to do this, the whole observation is again back to square one like previously. Done, found up. You want to give a score to it, give a score to it, finish. It serves no purpose other than having a score attached to it. Right? So the same old thing will be repeated. So when we talk about observation, uh, wasting of time again. Right? So we are trying to come up with something which can be used by all and which will be useful. All right. Now what is good teaching? All right. If we recall this, we say it must have a defensible definition of good teaching. So what do you mean by good teaching? Now, if you recall, you are afraid of good teaching. The way one, two, three, and four. When we say we go and observe the teachers in the classroom, which domain are you looking at? What is domain one? Preparation. Preparation and planning. Planning. Planning and preparation. Domain two? Classroom environment. Classroom environment. Domain three? Instruction. Instruction. The teaching itself. And domain four? Reflection. Professional responsibility. The reflection part. Now when you go and observe the teacher in the classroom, are you observing this or this? Or this or this? I should call the evidence that you can collect when somebody is teaching is usually because you are in a classroom situation so you can look at the environment so evidence can be there and 
also domain three, the actual teaching, the instruction itself. All right. So when you look at this best teaching or good teaching, you are not just collecting things about teaching alone. You are not looking merely at domain three. It has to be more than that because the teaching you have to prepare. Good teaching you have to look at good preparation. All right. So what this is trying to say is best definition of good teaching include more than what we can see, right? Or making observations, what we can see in the classroom is more than what we can see in the classroom, and therefore making observation alone is sufficient. So if your definition of good teaching is just based on what is seen, it's incomplete, right? It is more than the domain three. It's more than domain three, and it goes beyond teaching. That means it must also have the domain one and four inside. Right? So when you come up with the definition of good teaching, you must remember you are not looking at action in the classroom itself alone. You must look at other components. Right? So leading from there, we say that the observation is important but it is insufficient. All right? And also the observation must be fair, it must be reliable. What do you mean by reliable? <coughs> what do you mean by reliable? If I have three observers observing me, the comments made by the three observers must be more or less consistent when they use that instrument. For example, if I ask you to make your own ruler, try to imagine, try to estimate what is the length of one inch, all right? Take a piece of paper, I want you to mark off one foot, divide it 12 inches. Use that instrument to come and measure this. What happens? Each one will come up with different readings, all right? Then we say that your ruler that you make is <coughs> Because you're measuring the same thing and you come up with different measurements, different answers. So similarly, the instrument that you use for observe, observing teachers in the classroom must be something very standard. All right? And at the same time, it must be valid. The, the, the idea of value, the concept of value. Who would like to explain the concept of value? value. If I want to measure the length of this table, what do I use? Ruler. I cannot use, I say, the weight of this, you know, I will take the weight of this table, I can tell how long it is. You don't use a weighing scale because the instrument is not valid. <coughs> so similarly, if we say we want to look at the dressing of the teacher, the way the teacher dresses, then I know whether he or she is a good teacher. may not be valid. It may be one of the conditions, but it is not the only one you say that that is the way to measure good teaching, then it's not valid. Any questions so far? Very good. I can see people getting very quiet now. <coughs> And the other important concept that I wanted to remember is observation of teaching. You are when you do this assessment of the teaching, right? It is not a one-off thing. If I assess you today, this is the way you perform, and then I take that to be your your score throughout the whole year. Is that fair? No, because teaching is something that the skills is developed every day. All right. New skills are put in and you improve because there is this professional learning. So the assessment must be formatic assessment, meaning it's diagnostic and helping you to improve, then find out what's wrong, what is good, what is bad, then help you to improve again 
So your observation on day one and your observation on day five, there will be differences. There will be improvement. So this sort of assessment, we say, is formative, right? It's not summative. It's not just straight away. This is it. This is your score, and then you carry the score with you throughout your teaching teaching career. No. So observation must be seen as a way of contributing to this formal or formative assessment. Alright? Now, to help you do this assessment and observation, we need to use the framework for teaching. Alright? Now, I want you to recall the framework for teaching, which we have done just now. classroom will be more or less similar. Not exactly the same. All right? The problems that you face in the classroom, controlling the students and so on, <coughs> with teachers in Africa also, feel, also experience it. All right? So there are certain actions in the classroom, or all these actions in the classroom are sort of universal everywhere. In the world, it's more or less the same. Right? But we have been doing it year in, year out, but nobody actually sits down and says, why not we try to look at teaching and then see whether we can divide it up into this sort of different components. And it is, this one was done in America. All right? it's not, this is not something new, <coughs> things that you do in the classroom. Prepare, you create an environment, and then you teach, and then you reflect. Teachers all over the world do it all the time, but they were not divided into this four domains. Now, when we have this framework with all the four domains, it sort of helps us to concentrate and think about it more systematically. And also, this framework gives you a common language so that when you talk about domain 4, okay, then you know what you are referring to. Alright? So, this framework for teaching has now become the sort of uh, fundamental, it, it is for all teachers in most states in America. 
And a lot of this development, teacher development, is based on this. And we are following that as well. We started off with the framework for teaching. Then we talk about how to prepare lesson. Then the next thing is how do you observe lesson. But all this will be based on this framework. All right? Now, what we have in each framework will be the component A, B, C, D, E, F. Different components. This one we have five. These are the different components. And again, each of the components is again broken down into elements. Now if you have this piece of, if you have this book with you. Some of you were given individual handout. All right. Now this, within this, is listed all the elements as well. All right. Now when you observe teaching in the classroom, you are trying to observe all the elements, but not all the elements will be will be present. All right. So. Always have this framework in your mind and when you observe, you try to link up with what you see to the different elements in each of the domain. Now, I hope you are able to remember, recall all the components at least, not all the, not all the elements, but at least all the components. There should be 22 components. All right? 6565. Six, five. No, 6556. Five, six. 6 in domain 1, 5 in domain 2, 5 in domain 3, and 6 in domain 4. Now, when you observe, when you go to the classroom, when you observe, try to link what you see to all the different domains and components and if possible the elements as well. Right? Now when you are able to link it, then you'll be able to write a better report that will be able to help the teachers. Now when you go into the classroom, what happens is you are able to get evidence. For example, you enter the classroom, oh, you say the, the notice board seems to be not fully used. Looking at this, all right, and uh, I see some student work, and impossible to describe. <coughs> so all this will give you all the evidence. As you go in, you are extracting evidence. Right. Similarly, when you talk to the teacher before the before you observe the teacher, right, the teacher will be able to tell you what he or she wants to do, what is the intention today, all right, how much he or she knows about the student, and then at the end of the day, what does he want the student to learn? Alright? So all this will be able to tell you about the way the teacher has prepared the lesson. 
So again, when it talks about the teachers through free of conference, that means free observation conference, you are able to gather evidence as well. So your job is to get all this evidence. All right. Now, when you when you observe the teacher teaching, this one is through observation. All right. This one is also through observation. When you observe the teacher teaching, right, you are able to gather evidence relating to <coughs> communication. Whether the teacher is communicating clearly and accurately, that is 3A. Right? 3A, communicating clearly and accurately. Then 3B, what is it? Engaging students in learning. Pardon? 3B, sorry. You see, discussion and question technique. So whether the, the question that the teacher uses is a relevant question, whether it is high order question, meaning does the question require students to think before answering or simply like faham ka? That is a very low order question. So when the teacher asks a certain question, faham ka? That maybe you should jot down evidences low low level low low order question faham ka you know that is evidence now how do you know whether students sudah faham atau belum belum faham how do you know that whether they have, they have understood or they have not that's the that's that but you just you just want to find out before you proceed to the next level ask them whether they have any questions ask them whether they have any questions most of the time will be no Anyone with any question? Put up your hand. Right? Doesn't happen. One way to find out is to find is exactly ask the question that you want them to know. Right? If remember our example, capital of Mongolia. Last year when we did the training, and you know, you see. Now of course everybody knows. Right? When we did it last year, many did not know. So it becomes a new knowledge. Once you know, you know, right? So if I ask you, you know, do you know the capital of Mongolia? Yes, no. If they say yes, maybe they have the wrong answer. If you ask them straight away, what is the capital of Mongolia? If they give you the right answer, that means they know. If they give you the wrong answer, they don't know, right? So you don't want a yes/no answer, yes/no question, right? So you collect the sort of evidence as well. We will be doing this exercise of this collective evidence. All right? And at the same time, after you have collected the questions, you have also linked them to the different components. What you have to do is this evidence, not all the evidence will be used. All right? Now, this evidence, when you collect them, Because you already have this idea 
good teacher should be dancing all the time. <laughs> right? Now this teacher is sitting down, students <coughs> just doing work, just copying writing. Now in order for you not to make this negative interpretation, what must you do? No. You must ask the teacher why she was sitting down to find out more because there may be valid reasons for the teacher sitting down. For example, maybe the students are doing a test. But even doing a test, then the teacher shouldn't be sitting down. The teacher sitting down brings some work. Maybe the teacher needs to answer some question, give some information to the principal office right now. They want the, they want the answer, they want the, the information five minutes from now. So while the teacher gives the students some work, he is busy doing administrative work. Hmm. And then within five minutes, the information is sent to the office. But if you did not ask, did not know that the teacher is actually doing administrative work, information required by the principal, your first interpretation will be observation here. Teacher not teaching, teacher sitting down or student copy notes. You are not making judgment yet, you are collecting evidence. Alright? I saw the person running out from the shop. Is that person a robber or maybe is a victim or whatever? But you cannot make that judgment yet. What did you see? I saw this person running out from the shop. That's all. Similarly here, you saw the teacher sitting down, student copying work, copying work from the left the from the whiteboard. That's all you saw. But teacher lazy, teacher no good, that judgment cannot be made until you have the domain for where the post of conference. Alright? Now collecting evidence from here, join up with this evidence, then you form your interpretation. Your interpretation here is about interpretation of good teaching. Now, not all the evidence you have to use. Because during a lesson, there are so many things happening. Teacher announcing here, walking there, jumping here, jumping there. Teacher talking to this group, to that group. Not every action must be recorded. If only if it's the action or the behavior is relevant <coughs> to good teaching and or to bad teaching, then you want to pull it out so that you can have a discussion with the teacher. Then only you collect it. Alright? After collecting, you must link it up to the different domains and then come up with your interpretation. Then this interpretation, again, you must link it up to the level of performance. That means the distinguished, proficient, basic, unsatisfactory. If you can identify this, all this interpretation to this different level, you say what you did just now when you asked this question is very good because it is very high on the question. I saw most of the students, in fact all the students were trying to get answer. They could not answer but they you could have to see that all of them were engaged because all were thinking. So you must give the evidence to support why you say that it is good, all right? But at the same time, it will help those students who are not so good. If you, if you why not you ask this question and split it up into small question, right? Because the question you asked was very good. It took a long time for the students to come up with the answer because they have to think so hard, and some of them were lost along the way. 
If I were you, I think what I'll do is I will break this question up into three parts. So that is your suggestion. All right. Now, when you have this, <coughs> it must be followed by. These suggestions can be how to improve, how to move from this level to the next level higher up, or at the same time, the suggestions could be I would like you to share this with the other colleague. I've observed another one, I think she has that sort of problem. But you are able, it seems that you are able to solve this problem with what you did in the classroom. Would you like to share this with teacher A? So you are encouraging this professional learning. Right. Now if this observation is done in this sort of manner, then it is not time wasting. It serves a purpose. It is not threatening to the teacher. Right? Because all of us know that we are not good at everything. We need to learn. We need to improve. But if there's somebody coming in to help us to improve and we learn together, we are happy to do it. So what happens is, oh, somebody wants to come and sit down in my classroom. I don't care. It's good. It will not be threatening to me. Because whether the principal is coming to observe me today or the principal is not coming to observe me at all today, I will still teach the way I teach. I don't have to do anything extra because what I do is the best already. Not because the principal is coming today, I must bring an elephant in the classroom <laughs> to show the elephant in the teaching about elephant I must bring up no. Right? Or every day when I teach, I'll teach from here. You read and then okay, explain. <coughs> but if the principal is coming to observe me today, I will be bouncing. You know, doing all sorts of things. I will not be sitting. And because I've been sitting all this while and then today I'm dancing, I twist my ankle. <laughs> right? Because of the movement, I'm not used to moving. Then all the problem will start. That's why all the tension builds up. Somebody is coming to observe me today. I must do this, I must do that. Now when you say I must do this, I must do that, you yourself know what is good teaching, but you have not been doing it. Correct? But if you have been doing this every day, it becomes natural. You want to come in anytime, just come in. Or oh, not because now I'm setting work for the students to do, and then walking around, and the principal comes in, okay, stop your work, I must teach. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. It's part of your lesson, your plan is like that. You just carry on because you know this is the best intention. You're doing it with the best intention. If you have to sit down at that time to mark papers, all right, you are getting them, you identify that this group needs help. Then the rest don't need help. So they are doing some work, then you want this group to come and they want to share some of the things which have been maybe confidential, you don't want others to know, you ask one by one to come, then you are doing a work here. Now the principal coming in, right, if he or she is a trained observer, he or she will not jump into the first interpretation like lazy. Right? That is why this sort of training it must be for all stakeholders. Then I don't have to be afraid because principal now go down walks in because my plan is to talk to one every student in that group individually. Now because the principal is coming in, I must change my plan. I must be seen to be entertaining everybody. No, you don't have to do that. Right? So this observation, if it is carried out properly, with good intention, the whole idea of competency improvement, with the whole idea of professional learning, should be this way. You go in, you gather evidence based on this framework, then you interpret, you link it up to the level of performance, then you come up with the suggestions. Alright? Now in order for you to do this, we need to go through this domain again. 
Now what I want you to do, right, is function A, where we have situations in the classroom. Function A. No, not here, not here. In the, the second second set of notes that I give up. So this one is the handout, and then we have function A. This one. No, don't it. Got it? We have not got this worksheet. A. Now this is this part is there should be six worksheets A B C D E F. All right. Anyone needs this? Okay. Now if we look at look at worksheet A. Now what we are trying to do through this exercise is to help you to link evidence in the classroom or scenarios in the classroom to the correct domains and elements, components as well as elements. Alright? So if you look at example one, question one, I mean, not example. Look at question one. A history paper is graded and written in class. Now imagine this, you are observing this happening in classroom. A history test paper has been marked and then written in class. Alright? Now the situation now is the students are upset. You are sitting there observing. And the teacher has written the test papers for the students. The students are upset, not happy. Teacher, teacher, why this, why that? Oh, oh no, teacher not fair and things like that. And you saw that happening. Then you put down there. This is your observation notes, alright? This is your evidence that you have collected. Right? History paper returned to class, to pupils, students upset. Now, you also try to explain why they are upset. Because they did not know what criteria the teacher used to grade it. Teacher, you're not fair. You did not tell us how many marks you're giving to question one. We didn't know that. Now you, you give us so little marks. We thought it was about 15. Now it's like about 10. Question three, we thought it was about 10. You put it about 15. Not fair, sir. You know, things like that. So you have a situation. Alright, question one. Classroom situation. Uh, you are supposed to identify which domain and which component. Alright, and then describe this description. And also So if you look at this situation here. How would you interpret? Now we are trying to take you from here. You have collected the evidence. How would you interpret? So that you can give suggestions later on. So the, the way to interpret is you must identify the domain, the component, and the element first. How would, how, where would you place this sort of observation, this sort of evidence? Has it to do with something to do with domain one, or domain two, or domain three, or domain four? Can there be overlapping? There can be overlapping, but you have to look at it from what are you trying to suggest? What sort of suggestions you want to give afterwards? Yeah, because because if the students are complaining about uh, the teachers not 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 telling them <coughs> the criteria uh, the criteria in the first place, so that there should be a planning. The teachers yeah. didn't plan properly. That's exactly the answer. Students are not happy because they are not sure of the criteria. But then, 
but if you are looking at the, you know, if the students are upset, causing a lot uh, of misbehavior, team. you know, students quarreling, students shouting at teacher, uh, that we are looking at a different, different component. But if that had been the case, your evidence would not be just this. Your evidence would be more towards the misbehavior, the, the sort of uh, bad mm -hmm. language used by the student or the no respect. Right? Your evidence will be those related to that respect. But that is based on this evidence that you have collected. The intention is to link it up to the preparation part. <coughs> yeah, you keep the nail on the head. So this example, in this example, what is the domain and what is the domain three? Domain three? Domain one. Why domain three? Providing feedback. But you see the, the, the situation here is not so about providing feedback. Right? When you lack the evidence, it's not teacher giving back the marks and then explaining to the student how they have performed. Uh, that, that is providing feedback. Teacher gave back the marks, gave back the answer screen, students not happy. And the students complaining that they are not aware of the criteria used when they, when they set up the test. So they should be one half. It has got to do with the planning and the preparation because the teacher did not prepare well. And then this has got to do with the assessing students' learning. Correct. When you give a test, what is the purpose of giving the test? Assessing students' learning. So the component is assessing <coughs> assessing student learning. That is the component. Now, which element is it now? Who? What is it? Criteria. Criteria and standard. So, now the purpose of this exercise is to help you to not to collect the evidence, but how to interpret the evidence, and then link it up to the domain, so that you can give. Proper suggestions. Difficult, right? You are lost. Who else are lost? You put it in the lost and found column. Okay, now that we have found her, where are you lost? Yeah. Assessing student learning. Uh, that is a component. The name of the component itself. Yeah. If you look at the this one. Assessing student learning is part of the it's a component in domain one. But then here I've not listed the I've not listed the you want to call that the elements. Got it? So we found you? Okay. Anybody lost? <laughs> okay. Now we carry on doing the next 19 question. By right, we do about 100 in order to be able to pay. Right? Maybe this is a three week workshop or no, one whole week workshop. Then we will be to do more and then we will to observe teaching. Since this is a one day workshop, then we divide up the work as well.
right? So this group will go two and three, two and three, four and five, six and seven, yes, six and seven, eight, nine, ten. There are four of you, eight, nine, ten, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Discuss among yourself, don't just do it by yourself, alright? Because there are lots of interpretation. Tender like you. Thank goodness I know how to edit video tapes. <laughs> Read, read, the, read the situation first. 
teams in the case speech class have designed and evaluation plan for teachers they are presenting. They have created the rubric, identifying the key elements of a good presentation. Sorry, it's good presentation, not good presentation. A good presentation. And three levels of performance for each of the elements. Okay, so domain three D. Domain three. Domain three. What is that? Instruction. Was that instruction? C. Engaging students in learning. Agree. Other other people, what do you think? Is it to do with students engaging, engaging themselves in learning? This is in the speech class, all right? The students in Mr. K's class, they are designing the assessment rubric. That means they are, they are coming up with how to assess speech presentation. And what is good? What is good presentation? So they want to be able to assess their friends <coughs> how to make presentation. So, for example, they may come up with content. They are going to give fifty marks, and the, the voice another five marks, clarity another five marks, right? And then the way the person stands another five marks. Something like that. They have come up with different criteria for assessment. Now, is this teaching or is this engaging students in learning or has it got to do with the preparation part? Engaging and engaging. On the surface, it's supposed to be engaging students in learning. Now, depending on what you want to write about, right? Now, if you want to write, you think that that is good or no good, if the students are doing it? Good. It's good. Now, always remember when we say that, that the teacher moves from level of unsatisfactory to the level of distinguished, what is the main thing that you are looking for? Teacher as facilitator. Hmm? Teacher as facilitator and student taking control of their own learning, taking over the responsibility of for learning. Right? If the students can do the work, the teachers facilitate, or the teacher has trained the students so much so that the students can actually take over their own learning, but the student, the teachers are is still there facilitating. Then we say that that level is at the distinguished level. Now in this case, if you are look, if you want to write something, let's say you're looking at students taking control because the teacher has been so good, right, able to get the students to do this sort of work because if the students know how to assess, that means they know what emphasis to give when they do the presentation. Right? You are able to teach the students to that sort of late level. The students are now taking control of their own learning. Now, if that is the case, then where would you put the domain and which domain component will you identify? Will you classify this situation? Domain two. Domain two. What is that? Establishing a culture for learning. Establishing a culture of learning. And in that student pride in group. Students, but then we not say that the students are, are very proud of their work. Domain one F. Why one F? They are coming up with the criteria and standard to assess the students' work. No. One B. Why one B? So some say one F, some say domain two, some say domain three. Now this indicates that you see 
a certain situation in the classroom can be interpreted so differently. Yeah. So observation is not something simple. All right? You need lots and lots of practice. Now the suggestion here is situation two. Situation two is actually one half as well. It's the same thing as the one. Now why is it so? Now if you are the observer, if you are seeing a teacher who is distinguished, the teacher has to be able to lead the students to such a level where the students are now taking control of their taking over the responsibility for their own learning. Right? Maybe in the previous lesson, if you have observed this teacher maybe three weeks ago when you first started this, training them what to look for. Alright? For example, in his first lesson about presentation. He has already taught the student a good presentation will consist of this, 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 this. The criteria. And then what is the what sort of uh, standard is required. Now the students are using this and putting it into an instrument that they will use to assess their own presentation. Then you say that it is one F. Right? But if your evidence is saying that you know every group the students are busily, you know, discussing this rubric that they come up with. If that is the assignment the teacher gives to the class, then it is not one F anymore, it is engaging students in learning these activities and assignment. So again it will depend on your understanding of why this is happening. Right? Now here I want to choose one app because I want to show you that you are actually try to look at it from the perspective of the teacher is at the distinguished level where the learning as responsibility has been transferred to the student. But be very careful, don't run away with the idea of uh, everything the students will do by themselves. For example, tomorrow I'm going to teach chapter 4. Now go back and read tomorrow, I want you to come and tell me about chapter 4. Now that sort of transfer is not what we are talking about. All right. Distinguish between the two, where the students take control because of your activities that you have gone through with them. Now they know what you are looking for. This is a typical case where students got to learn how to give good speech. So you would have told them what constitutes a good speech. Now you tell them, now you know what a good speech consists of. Now if I want to mark your speeches, your speech presentation, how would I give you marks? To what component do I give this mark and that mark? So now, why not you come up with your marking scale, marking scheme? So that is what the students have done. All right. So in that. So in this in the process of discussion. <laughs> The teacher has not assessed them, but the teacher is asking the student, if you are making good presentation, how would you assess your presentation? Now, if the consensus is the students themselves come up with something, which is also based on what the teachers have told them earlier. Then using the student's own scheme, marking scheme, which is approved by the teacher, then in a way the students will feel very proud. Right? Now of course this one there is not enough information for us to pin to that. But that's why I want to 
give one half as the answer, it's not the only answer, but when you give one half as the answer, that means you think of the other possibility. Right? If you think it is engaging students in learning, then you need other information as well. When students are, you know, each of the group is divided up, and then students are busy discussing and coming up with rubric. No? Yeah. It's just very general students are doing this, that's all. Right? That's why the evidence that you collect here, what you collect and what you report will, constitute, will actually determine what are you looking at which domain you are looking at, which element you are looking at. Now, if I'm going to use one app and then assessing students uh, learning, and then students are helping him to come up with the criteria and standard, the moment I do this, my intention is to say that the teacher is distinguished. I'm trying to link it up to the levels of performance. Right? I'm, I'm not trying to look for faults. Here I'm saying the teacher has done such a good job that the students are able to do this themselves. Then of course you must look at the work done by the student, whether the rubric is good or bad, whether it's acceptable. Okay. Well, let's go on and then we'll see more examples. All right. Now, I think the first two situations sort of makes us feel that we are inadequate. There are so many things, so many ways of interpreting. But not all, not all the situations will be like this. I'm picking the harder example so that we can start to look at it from all angles. Number three. Thank you. 
free question free question and discussion and here the students are able to use the what they have learned about the three different types of question factual question inference inferential inferential question as well as the uh, interpretive question right they can use that in their discussion as well so using question questioning and discussion technique and which domain, which, which element is it? That will be under quality of question. Quality of question, because the, the students are able to give good quality. Different types of question, all right? The so three types. So it's quality of question. Anybody disagree? Do you think there's something else? in this form 3 history class have been given given a timeline and a worksheet to fill in while the right that means the teacher tells them I give you 20 minutes to fill in your worksheet right 20 minutes now while the students are doing this the teacher takes attendance as well as completes one paperwork required by the principal's office has it got to do with teaching or has it got to do with controlling student or has it got to do with the certain procedure? Is it teaching itself or is it to do with the environment? What, why, why adjustment? You, you got to look at your components, all right? Has it got something to do with adjustment? Look at the 11, uh, the 12, the 22 components first and see which one fits in. Now, the, the danger here, a lot of us will just simply put it into something based on what we know, but not based on the framework. Your reference point must always be the framework, the four domains. Then you will not go astray. Right now, if you don't think in terms of in, within this framework, somehow you will link it to something that you know, which is not within the domain. Right? That in, within the domain, there's this word, lesson adjustment. That somehow you think is lesson adjustment, but... Is this something to do with lesson adjustment? This is something to do with instruction. Instruction meaning is something to do with teaching. Now the first group only looked at the first exercise. Students given timeline to finish worksheet. And that is engaging students in learning, student activities. But here the emphasis the when you record that, what is your purpose? You are saying that the students are doing work, teachers are also, the teacher is also doing some other work. So What should it be? Instruction. Instructions or this more to do with the management to create this environment for learning. Where you are trying to look at the environment. It should be more towards the environment. Alright? Now again I want to emphasize is the person gathering the evidence, you must know what are you trying to, to, 
talk about later on. Correct? Now this is unfair because you are reading somebody else's evidence and you try to link it to the domains and the components and elements. But if you were to be the one collecting the evidence, you collect the evidence with the intention of linking it to a particular component. Right? So it's easier when you collect. Whereas now you interpret somebody else's evidence, then you must think of other possibilities. So in this case, what it is? What is it? Pussy. You see, the intention of this, this, this observer is to, to tell the teacher that he, he or she is able to manage the procedure in the classroom quite well. That means while you need to do your attendance taking and your paperwork for the principal's office, you did not waste students' time. And you did not do it at the beginning of the lesson. <coughs> you only did it when you have set the student's work. So that student's time is not wasted. And you know how much time you need to finish your, your paperwork. And you also know how much time is needed for the students to finish the worksheet. That is why you set them a timeline. Rather than, like if I say, have a tea break. Because I need to answer phone call or whatever. Then I did not set even a timeline. Okay, because the phone call comes in, I say, take a tea break, then everybody goes out. On that is also an evidence that you can collect, did not plan properly, did not give specific instruction. You can have a tea break. You try to be flexible, right? Because when you answer the phone call, you have not set them these people any work. You only set them to go off so that for your own convenience. So your suggestion is perhaps just ignore the call. Okay, so in this case, it should be 2C. <coughs> right? Managing classroom procedures. And in this case, is management of transition. 2C, managing classroom procedures and management of transition. Because there are two things happening. So this transition from one to the other. Okay, next, number seven. Stage school for the day is to train the seven two students on the working field trip around the school. Uh, is that learning activities? Is it to do with uh, <coughs> Miss Miss M's goal? That means Miss M's intention A for the today's lesson is to take the students around the school and go to speak to look for certain things. The goal that means. You know, you ask the teacher before the lesson what you want to do. No, today I'm going to the school. I have to look for certain things. Alright? So, what is it? Is it to do with the instruction or is it to do with the goal or is it to do with the classroom situation? Why do you say that? Planning and pre pre preparation. She sets the goal for the day. Right. Has she done it or is she doing it? Not yet. Miss M's goal for the day is to take her standard two class students on a working trip. One C. Right. She has not done it, so it should be preparation. Preparation. So it is one C. But this preparation is relating to what? Oh. To go. So it should be selecting instructional goals. One C. Element. Right? But which element is it? Look at what she wants to do. 
Is it very clear what she wants to do today? Yes. Today I want to take the students around the school for walking trip. Not few trip around the school to look for certain things. But she didn't mention what are the things that she wants to look at. Okay, so if you look at it as not clear, it's still under clarity, then you may want her to improve on it. You must say, take them on a walking trip to look for whatever signs of erosion or looks for uh, whatever. Population of the plant. Yeah. So when you write that, evidence, it is with the intention of giving suggestions later on. Your book is not clear. Alright, so if that is the case, it comes in clarity. Right? E. The element is clarity. Number eight. Grouping of students. Now, read the statement again, the scenario again. Is it something to do with the grouping or is it something to do with the activities? Students in Mr. L's English class work in pair. Alright, so you say that is grouping. But they have other things as well. Reading and commenting on each other's essay. Are you, which is more important, the grouping in pair or the reading and commenting on each other's essay? Right, so if that is the case, is that grouping? He has grouped the students in pair and then asking the students to comment on each other's essay. So it should be provided to that, isn't it? You see, providing feedback here need not be the work of the teacher all the time. Always, that's why at the, at the start of this exercise, I did say that always try to look at the levels of performance. If the responsibility for learning is shifted to the student, it is what we, are, we want to look for. Right? Now, in this case, Students have written the essay. Now they ask them to okay, work in pair. You read her work and she reads your work, and after that you comment on the quality of the work. Now if the students have not mastered the skills in this essay writing, can they comment? They can't. So if they can't, if the teacher asks them to do this, that it is not satisfactory. So but we are not making judgment here yet. Are we making judgment here? No. But then this is the evidence, but then which category it belongs to? So in this case, it belongs to the 3D. Providing feedback to the student. It could be the teachers providing feedback or the students providing feedback. Alright? Why can't it be 3D? Why can't it be? 3D. 3D, which is? Which is using question Student? Using question in the discussion technique. Was there any discussion? <coughs> it's not mentioned here that it's discussion. Commenting. commenting and discussing are different things. Commenting that means you are critic, right? Doing a critic or you are evaluating and saying, that, oh, I think this sentence is good. Maybe the, you don't have your introduction, your conclusion is not there. Right? Okay? Now again, depending on which component you want to zero in, your statements will be written accordingly. Your evidence will be written accordingly. Alright? If you want to say that this method of grouping students is good, then of course if you write differently again, what your focus is on the grouping. 
right? Managing of instructional groups and then grouping them. Okay, so it should be 3D, all right? One. Number nine. Management of transition while students are moving to their groups. You see, it has something to do with considerable confusion. That means, you know, students, you give your instructions, but students did not know what to do. You say, move into your group and look at your material. So, students there are waiting. You know, the, when we say management of uh, transition, that means moving from one activity to another, that, that is the transition period. Students are a bit confused as a result of the poor instruction or whatever. So here it is to see management of classroom procedures, but can be there can be further be broken down into one, two, three elements. Management of instructional groups, management of materials and supply, management of transition. Alright? I think you need to take a break. I can see that people are <laughs> not responding at all. Can I take a short break? Yes. Not too long. Realizes that she is not well prepared for this area of uh, managing different instructional groups. So she's been 
talk to other teachers. Now, when you talk to other teachers with the intention to improve, you're actually growing professionally, all right? And then she also takes steps to enhance her skill because I'm lacking in this. What should I do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to observe other teachers before my next lesson so that I can be better prepared for my next lesson. So this is definitely domain four, right? Your professional responsibility. Number 12. Mr. T's biology class, all right, the student, the class signs a, signed a petition saying that their homework and test papers were always written late, so they want it to be written faster. They claim that they don't have get them in time to revise for the test. What do the student want? Huh? They want the feedback to be given to them on time. All right, so what is this? What has this got to do with the has it to do with the teaching or has it got to do with the planning? Is to do with the instruction? Domain three, but which category? Which which component? D. 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 Providing feedback to students. But in this case, the feedback wasn't provided back in time. So which timeliness? getting easier now, is it? No. No? <laughs> 13? In Mr. G's math class, the students are working in small groups to complete the worksheet. It's unclear to them what they are supposed to do. The teacher wants to group to do to clarify the task. 3A. 3A. Communicating theory and... It's got to do with the instruction, alright? And because the communication was it clear and accurate? Then student had difficulties, right? Following the instruction. As a result, the teacher has got to move from group to group to explain. Mm -hmm. Alright, number 14. What, ele what element? Element here will be direction and procedures. Alright, direction is element and procedures. Paper 14. Do this the one. absence rate one day. Mr. W decides to reorganize the small groups within the class so that everyone can participate in the planned activity. 3E lesson adjustment. Yes. That's 3E lesson adjustment. Teacher was able to demonstrate flexibility and responsiveness. Right? Teacher has only planned certain things, but then because there are high number of absentees, then the teacher has got to readjust the planning in such a way that more students can be involved. So good. Lesson adjust adjustment. Number 15. Mr. P, an 8th grade math teacher, does not know whether his students have learned the 7th grade curriculum of 1B, knowledge of students. Knowledge of students, yes. Skills, skills and knowledge. Knowledge of the students, skills and knowledge. One B knowledge of students' skills and knowledge. Uh, and, yep. Sixteen. Many students in Mr. L's chemistry class indicate that he has encouraged them to study chemistry at university. Many of them say they plan to enter fields that use chemistry such as medicine, nursing, nutrition, and engineering. For F. Why for F? Uh, professionalism service to students. Look at the situations again, all right? Mr. L is a chemistry teacher and these many students in his class indicate that Mr. L has encouraged them to study chemistry, right? Encouraging them, not just for the past exam, right? So much so that the many of her students, of his students are now planning to study chemistry in the university. So the teacher has been able to do his job so well 
a student who like the subject, many of them say that I want to study chemistry in the university, when I go to the university. At the same time, I want to take up professions related to chemistry. To be for F, what what else? For F is what? For F is showing professionalism. Service of service to student, advocacy and decision making. When you say can it be to be, why to be? Expectation for learning and achievement. Expectation for learning and achievement. What do they expect? If, let's say, you are so interested in what you think you are able to put the interest across to the student, so much so that the students are now taking chemistry as the choice of a career, what are you doing? You are actually establishing a culture of learning. Students want to learn more. Right? You are actually establishing for learning and in this case what happens is students are not just really learning to pass exam but they are saying that they want to take a career in chemistry as well and this is what the teacher has done is the teacher has set high expectations right we expect you to do well we expect you to
one are you looking at? Which one do you think is more appropriate? From two more studies on different cultures, Mr. H has asked students in the class to describe special traditions their family observed during the year. Now, if it is something you want to say that this activity is good, appropriate, then it can be free. But if it is relating to when you talk to the teacher before the observation, The student do you must know the LCM, the lowest common multiple, as well as HCM. So last one. talking about the bulletin board and what is present in the bulletin board. One board we have all the students we have the project and other we have a great famous people and students are coming to display and put so
Accessibility to learning and use of physical space. This can be quite com confusing. Yes. Right? But with practice, it will come naturally. And again, it all depends on which category and which domain component and which component you link it up. But you don't do that. They have to concentrate on this, and this. No, you don't. But the moment you see this evidence happening, collect it, then you know, okay, this, I think it is like this, this component. All right? When you collect the evidence, more or less, you know the component. So it's easier. But having said that, if you are not familiar with the element, familiar with the component, you can do it as well. Evidence actually. Evidence is actually factual reporting of events. Happening. Students not happy. Is the space in terms of the student, the student behavior of the student, behavior of the teacher. and so on. So these are artifacts. You did not have but is that teaching Thank you. 
to have this. So when you write your form, it is based on your using good professional judgment by the observer as well. seem to like the teacher. Mm -hmm. This sort of uh, evidence good enough. Mm -hmm. When you say teach, they seem to like the teacher, you must give you think that the students like the teacher. What other evidence can you collect to show that the students like the teacher? Yeah? Students are paying attention. Students paying attention. What else? Students response to the question. Right? And the way they talk to the teacher seems to be very friendly and yet they show respect. So you, you make this sort of statement, but at the same time, you have to elaborate to give more evidence. Alright? In order for you to be able to make this objective judgment later on. Right? So the two, students weren't engaged during the lesson. Students not engaged at all. Why do you say they are not engaged? What evidence have you got? I think they were engaged. Not engaged. Show me why. Where? So what should you do to improve this evidence? Let's say you, the students were not engaged. But if you write like this, it is not so how do you make it more objective? Hmm? Students are actually discussing discussing about the film show last night. You actually hear it, then you have to record it. As well. They were not discussing at all. All right? Students were one group of students. You know the name. This particular student is actually completing the homework. So you have to more specific evidence examples. The other one, procedure for distributing material results at the time. You would distribute material, okay, wasted wasting of time. What's wrong with the procedure? Maybe you would like to say that, you know? Asking students. You have many sets of uh, handouts to leave out. You just ask them to come in. Not systematic. Would be, it would have been more systematic if you were to ask one student to come and take one set and distribute or whatever. If you can come up with suggestions. But you must give specific evidence why the procedure was systematic. The last one is the teacher said in opinion girls weren't as good as men in maths as boys. Girls are not as good in maths as boys. Did the teacher say? Alright. If the teacher say you want to collect that as evidence, what you have to do is you put that teacher girls not.
plus seven. Second law of Will you stop to give the 
and say you bring back the boys or we just let it happen. Let it happen at a court. Then during your post observation conference, what do you do? Give me suggestions. Well, okay, then Mr. J said, I'm very angry, you know. Pronounce your name on the first day. All right, the teacher tells the student. What is the teacher trying to do? Interaction. Interaction.
Miss A tells the student, no, no, no. Mr. H hands back biology tests. Students didn't do very well. Mr. H gives back the biology test.
Okay? Paper graded with test to the student students are happy of the uh, criteria used. It's an opinion, but it can be made into evidence by just changing a little bit. Alright? Students demonstrate their findings with uh, demonstrate their findings with pride. Judgment evaluation 
or the teacher is very good because he stands by the door there and greet the student. No, you don't say very good or very bad because that is we are collecting evidence at that time. You are not making judgment at all until later. All right. So the next. time so to refer to that that is the evidence all right for example three students of the 18 offer nearly all the comments during the discussion that means the other students are not engaged right when you make this when you collect this sort of evidence you actually try to imply that the other 15 students are not engaged right those are your suggestions to be how do you engage the other 15 then the last one is an, obs an observer and there's an observed aspect of the environment. There's the assignment on the board for the students to do and so on. So evidence is based on what you collect about the environment, based on what the teachers say, based on what the students do, what the teachers do. Alright, that is evidence. Kids for taking notes, try to get as representative a record as possible. Words and action of the teacher and also the student link the notes to the component of the framework. Develop a shorthand, right? And don't judge. Yes. Okay, this will go later. Now going back to the component. Yes. If in every domain, all you have to do is to just which is the most important keyword, not keyword, <coughs> component in each domain. For example, looking at this domain 2, creating an environment of respect and reform, establishing a culture for learning, managing classroom procedures, managing student behavior, organizing fiscal space, all this is done with the intention of culture. establishing a culture for learning. So in this particular domain, Concentrate more on the component, establishing a culture for learning. Now, in your instruction, what is the most important? Engaging students. Engage students in learning. All right, and then if select in, uh, what do you call that, in your preparation, what is most important? Goal, selecting. Choose the correct goal. And lastly, in domain four. Reflect. If you think of your teaching, that is all then the others will come in. For example, if I want to engage the students in learning, what do I need to do? I must make sure that there is rapport and respect. I must make sure that the students are learning. I must make sure that I have the classroom presentation. I must make sure that the physical space is properly maintained. Then the culture for learning will be there. Right? If I want to engage students in learning all the time, So, just remember this three, even the domain four, you can take it out for a while. Remember the three components. Goal. Instructional culture. goals, establishing culture, and engage students in learning. So, when you observe, GCI. use that as a guideline. GCI. Are the students engaged in learning? Is there a culture for learning? And in your preparation, is your instructional goal properly selected, and how is it arranged? Now, I think we will need to break, have a break here. And uh, now when you come back this afternoon, we'll do three more exercises. Then we'll be observing a classroom situation. All right? Yes. I will talk about it, but uh, please be back by two because based on what has been happening for the last three days, we are a bit slow in terms of uh, our development okay. you know, you know, of this, this procedure. In fact, the other groups, they would have finished all the exercises by lunch time, whereas this group has got three more. All right. So, just some feedback. Maybe I think the pace is a bit slow, and uh, I think you are not as involved. Right? Maybe this is coming to the end of the second week, you are very tired, I know. 
I'm also very tired after four days of this, but I don't understand. That's why I have to help you by instead of dividing the work out, right? I do some of it myself. But then I hope you will learn as well. When you are sitting down there, observing, you see something that you are already tying it to some components. Then you can, you are able to put it down because you know exactly which domain, which component you are actually focusing on. Right? Right now, what we did before lunch was the opposite. Somebody has really written down the evidence and we do not know what the purpose of this person writing down the evidence for. That is why it's a bit difficult. Right? Given your own situation, you at least observe something, you observe the scenario, you really see, oh, this, this part is linked to this particular component. This is something I want to focus on where I can help this teacher to improve. So when that happens, you know what to write. The evidence will be clearer to you, will be more objective. It's not going to be as bad as what you did just now, right before. Because the scenario was observed by you. So you did not know the intention of writing the, those evidence. Alright? So the next thing is the hints for taking notes. Always try to link it. The moment you see something happening, you link it to the work. That you use your top hand. Don't, don't have to write down in full. For example, as as a student is always so, so well versed in your messages as as. Right? I'm sure you will use your short hand. And don't make judgment. You are not supposed to make judgment until you come to this stage. Because you already have certain 
perception of what is good or bad. So when it doesn't fit into the framework of good, I think that we have to be biased. You want to run away. with this person. So now for this exercise, I want every, if every group to discuss, think of one profession, not teaching situation, not the school situation, but think of other profession first. And the moment you go in, what are some of the things that you can use? From your experience, there will be enhance your even of this person. What will make you lose your confidence in this person? Alright? Let's just very quickly go through this.
No, the other groups I just share what they, you know, some of them talk about dentists, some of them talk about, you know, uh, wedding planner, uh, caterer, and even chef, on setting, right, the doctor surgery, you know. So I'm sure they did not go to that. But then the important thing, the first impression is important. But then sometimes, you see, the first impression tells you that it's not, it's not so good. It dampens your confidence. But you must go back. Why? No choice. It's not no choice because, <laughs> because the first impression does not give you the right impression. All right? What we are trying to drive at is, first impression is in surgery and so on, but they can good diagnostic diagnostic and they recover very fast. But to them it doesn't become this better. I don't at the end of the day it is part of the skill. It's not so much about the ambience. inside the classroom. So it's your first impression, not going sitting there and observe. Now what are some of the things that you see will make you think positively about that particular classroom, that particular class? What are the some of the things that you see that will make you make negative judgment about that class? But in school. Can you think of that situation now? Yes. Just each one do about three or four. Okay. School situation. When you see that, when the teacher is talking, please discuss. Negative. Right? Oh, okay. When the teacher is talking, right? Talking about. Talking students. 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 Talking students.
very active, not dynamic, not dynamic, and then not trying his or her best to do the learning. All right. Okay. Others. Now, when you talk about the other side of it, comes the negative. You are talking about the negative. Look at the other side of it. That will be the positive. standing in, in, in one instructional group explaining things to them right that gives you a very good impression right that means they even have a different instructional Is what happens you walk past the classroom, five rooms, only one has got a teacher. <laughs> the rest has no teacher. Right? The impression. Right? Where are the teachers? And sometimes when there are no teachers, you find that the students are very organized. They know what they're doing. That's also good. Right? So you must think of the positive side and negative side. Doesn't mean that no teacher is such an extent that teachers can be alright what we are going to look at alright but this will also bring us to because a framework of what good teaching is. so if we don't see it there straight away our impression is, is no good but don't let this be the one that influence your evidence gathering and also your judgment. See in your in one or two slides now. Let's see what we have here. Right? Looking at this worksheet F. First impression is important, but the first impression can be wrong. Right? And 
you tend to make fair changes. All right, now looking at this, we have three situations here. A student walks in, who are late, without a book and without a pass, <coughs> leaving the class or being late from another class. <coughs> the, 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 the student was told that okay, you are late, but don't do it again. We'll sit down. Make sure you don't repeat this. Now, five minutes later, or five minutes later, the student also did the same thing. Walk in and then late, without pass, without book. Now, this teacher started this student very very seriously all right why are you late don't do it again you know i want you to go back and get your dress or pass go to your, the other go, go back to your previous teacher and get your pass that will allow you to come in late now what will be your first impression you're sitting there observing two students coming in late same same scenario but one was coded one was reprimanded very severely Whereas the other one was just told, don't do it again, and sit down. Take out your book. Alright? And carry on doing the activities. What would be your first impression? Teacher is biased. Teacher is biased. Teacher is not fair. Unequal treatment. Right? It's not wrong to have the first impression. But what if you have any other additional information? Right? Where, which you can get, maybe if you know this, the situation, then you can interpret. But if you don't know the situation, you will interpret, you will hold on to your first interpretation. Teachers not fair, teachers, you know, buyers. Now, what additional information that will make you change your first interpretation? Maybe the first student. Uh, Louder, please. Maybe the first student. Maybe the first student, is that's the first uh, mistake that you Okay, is. first time offender. Yeah. So how do you get that? It's not during your observation. It will be after your observation. But you still need to take down your this evidence. But you are not making Is that question made here? No. But how do you make your judgment? And the most observation is taken. But you have not made judgment. You have not made you have to get more information from here, then you understand why the second right? You could be beating of offenders or there is a class say that if you're late for this, you will come this, you're accused. But if you have after if you come after the five minutes, you will be punished. It could be that. Alright, so you have to get that additional information. Alright, case number two. Definitions of side concepts in Mr. P's Center 5 class on the whiteboard for the students to copy. There is no discussion, students are just busy copying it. method, right? Easy way to teach. Copy. Okay, teacher does not the subject. Just copy from textbooks, students copy, teachers copy. Yeah, that interpret. Most of the time, you see, all these examples tends to lead to negative interpretation because what is teaching right now 
what will be able to change You say the teacher, no good teacher, lazy. The same copy notes. Teacher has lost her voice. Teacher actually lost her voice. Cannot talk. Cannot talk. <laughs> You're observing on that day, you would not know that the teacher has no voice because if you have not spoken to the teacher straight away you go to the classroom. That is your first your evidence, then your first interpretation is but you have not written it down yet. But you have to talk to the teacher afterwards before you can come up with your interpretation. Okay, any other situation? It's very dangerous. It could be right, it could be wrong, but you don't until you clarify. Especially if it is a negative. Alright? So when you gather evidence, okay, gather, but don't make judgment. Third scenario. Now, before that, I, I can give you another situation. I remember during my teaching days about 30 years ago in a school. There was one teacher, he would always volunteer to teach the worst class, form 3, form 3H, math. A lot of people would this teacher said, no, give me the class, I don't mind, I go in. He goes in, the students are going to the students will copy the, copy the, 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 so what he does is he will take all the he will teach them in fact he will teach them just for example some equation of exercise today we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Question one, two, three, four, five. Students would just put it there for them to do it. So the teacher will do right put the date, will draw the line for that. This side you must draw a line, this side to be Mark the work. Yeah. Once you make the same five questions on the board, students are busy coughing, you'll sit down. Okay, bring your yes your work yesterday. So they bring. So he'll mark. Even without because the answers are correct. So you want to check evidence of work done? Work done. Teachers mark exercises. Yes. Right? Students will control during that period. Other teachers going in will be having 
syllabus. Yes. But the students don't have. So the question is correct. Correct. So study this particular teacher. <laughs> looking at all the artifacts, looking at what's happening in the classroom. Excellent teacher. But what you know somehow the students will know that they have been cheated. Eventually they know that they have been cheated. Situation number three. Students in Mr. L's English work in pair reading and commenting on one another's work. I think we did this just now this morning. They work in pair. Then the interpretation. interpretation. Yes, Teachers not doing asking. Right? Or oh, any other. What situation will make you change your interpretation? What other inf additional information will help interpretation? Yes. I saw your hand. Wait, I was stretching. No, I saw your hand. I was stretching. I know. Uh, marking. So they're actually checking the marking scheme. For the correct point. Okay. Yeah. Self situation. Pardon? Self-directed. Self-directed learning. Learning. Or as we explained this morning, the students have been taught. We tick as a using that to consolidate in of seeking more information before you make your judgment. Alright, even though you might write down this as your evidence, don't draw your conclusion straight away. Alright? The other thing is the difference between goals and activities. Alright? Because sometimes activities Alright, the more that of 
knowledge. For example, the examples that I used was what? Last year. Something that you do not know, you will remember. So to see whether you know or you don't know, I just ask you the question. You can answer, means you know. What example did I use last year? Mongolia. Mongolia. Right? Capital of Mongolia, of course now everybody knows. Right? But most people did not know. But then after telling you it is, only knew. Right? Correct? So remember we have the knowledge at the lowest level. Next level. That means you have not been using it to set your Comprehension, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis. Now, those of you who don't have it, get it from your colleagues who had who had them last. You have been in copies, right? You have it. Our friend also has it. Is that what you want? Right? If you're doing it, then how to assemble the two, the, the, uh, the apparatus, you're going to write it differently. Students will be able to assemble a complete electrical circuit. Right? You just do activity. different materials. That is not objective. Alright? There are six here. I, it's not in the worksheet. Right? Now, just go through this very quickly. You have to determine whether it is a goal or an activity. Just give yourself to go through very quickly, then we go through with it. Identify three things that support a position and process of each. Go. Go. Play a game of basketball. Alright, but if I say after learning all the rules, alright, and skills, students will be able to play a game of basketball. That will be goal. But it's just say play. Don't know whether it's a goal or but a goal or activity, but we are not sure that it is most likely activity. Regroup in addition problems involving three digit numbers. Goal. That be a goal, but that not very clear here. Alright? That also be an activity. Determine the quantities of ingredient needed if a recipe is triple. Goal. 
is application. So it's do a science experiment with magnets and batteries. Activity. Explain the factors leading to the industrial revolution. Take a walking trip to look for signs of emotion. What is the purpose of taking the trip? Identify. Identify sign of erosion. That would be the goal. But that take a walking trip is an activity. Right? We are good at this now. Complete the worksheet on the Malacca Sultanate. Activity. Activity. Identify the characteristics of living things. Oh. Oh. Role play a conversation between Tonku Abdurrahman. Activity. Activity. Sing harmoniously in a chor in a chorus following the director's lead. Good. Good. Why is it a goal? What what tells you it's a goal? What tells you it is an activity? Sing. Sing. Sing is what? Activity. Sing is activity. But following. So which one are you looking at? Following. 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 I say sing first. Cannot sing. Cannot follow. Cannot follow. Cannot follow. So which is which? Oh, okay. Yeah. So which is a goal because we want them to be able to follow the directors so that they can sing correctly, alright? Harmoniously. Next one. Fill in the blanks in the English grammar worksheet. Activity. Activity. Name the capital of Mongolia correctly. It's an Right? But lowest level, it is the knowledge. Now, what we have done from this morning till now is leading you to this, leading you through these activities of gathering evidence, how to put them, how to classify them. But after having done all the evidence and so on, you must be able to come up with a report, your summary. All right. Now, if we are going to use a framework for teaching, when you write the summary, it should be in the form of domain. In terms of your preparation and your planning, what is good, what is not so good, what can be improved. So we call that the domain summary. Right? In domain two, in terms of the classroom environment, these are areas which are which are which are what we call that very prominent, which will need. These are the things that you need to focus on, and these these are some of the suggestions that I uh, will give you. All right. So maybe that's why here I do not want to give you the the, the, the format because the school has got to develop something by themselves by, by itself together with all of you. A tailored, right, for your own use. So I'm just putting it there, but in what format you have got to decide. All right. Now in writing this domain summary. You start out with a very strong topic sentence summarizing your overall interpretation of the domain evidence. Now, before we had our break, I told you that there are four components that you have to focus on. For each domain, you have only one. Right? For planning and preparation, culture. Right? <laughs> Selecting instructional goal. Right? And then if you focus on that, then the others will follow. All right. For domain two, you want to create or establish a culture for learning, and then for that to happen, there must be rapport, and there must be proper classroom management, management of students' behavior, organizing physical space. Then for the third domain, when you do the instruction, all your instructions, all your dancing, all your singing in the classroom, will all lead to learning, engaging students in learning. So that use that as your guide to start off your summary for each. Then from there you are able to link up. Alright? First question asked for domain 3. Are the students engaged in learning? That's all. First question to ask for domain 2. Is the environment conducive to creating a culture for learning? 
right? First question to ask for domain one is? Is the goal met? Is the goal correctly selected? And if it is correctly selected, are the resources correct? Right? Do the teachers, does the teacher know the content well? Does the teacher know the students well and link it up to the goals? Right? So that is how you write your, program, uh, your domain summary. Again, okay. use keywords from the level of performance. Now, this you have to refer to that uh, component book. Refer to this book. If you are looking at, let's say, component 2D, all right? <coughs> what is 2D? Managing student behavior. Now, which aspect of it? Is it on the expectation of the student's, student's behavior? Is it the monitoring of students' behavior or is it response to students' misbehavior? Right? Now, for each of these, there are descriptions of the levels of performance. If the teacher is showing signs of this, 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 the teacher is at this level. If the teacher is showing signs of that, that, this, some of this, the teacher is at the unsatisfactory level. Now, you have to keep referring to this book. Fortunately or un unfortunately, all right? So it will be good if you can borrow this and then make copies of this and carry with you all the time. What I've done is I've made you only the summary of the components, but not the elements. All right? The first two pages, the first, I think, uh, there. The first four pages, five, six, and four, five, six, seven. They are the summaries of the components. But then for the individual components, you will have the elements as well. Right? So you must refer, use keywords from this level of performance and include specific reference to the evidence. The evidence that you've collected and then when you say that you are at a profession, you are at a basic level because most of the time, this did not happen or whatever, then you have to actually give evidence. So it's linked up to your evidence that you collected. And lastly, convey a message respectful of the, to the, of, of the teacher. Don't give critical remarks like stupid, you know. You will, be, you will not be successful as a teacher. Alright, you need to work a lot harder. There must be sign of respect because we know that this is professional learning. Everybody will needs to learn all the time. All right. So your comments, I'm sure, amongst the league, you will not write disrespectful comments. But then you have to write something also encouraging. Right. I saw certain good aspect of your lesson, and then within this domain, you were extremely good in doing this. Right. Things like that. And writing suggestions, don't give order. Don't do this again, do this and do that. No. Use question like, would you like to try this? Right? Things like, uh, you might want to do this. Have you considered using this method? Right? If I were you, I would, I would do this or do that. Have you thought about using this instead of that? Right? Uh, would it be better if you have taken the students around the school rather than you know, taking them to the shopping mall? You can start off by looking at the surrounding here rather than going to the shopping mall, you can organize all this transport and so on, and students were lost. Right? Things like that, always in the form of question and giving suggestions. Would it be better, would it be like this or like that, so that the teacher can think if you give the order, it's the same as try this. But would it be better? Have you thought of this? Then the teacher will think, yeah. If you say do that, the teacher will straight away shut off. Why should I do it? Correct? Then the next thing is be specific. Point to certain events and certain evidence. For example, during this lesson, right, five of the students were actually sleeping. Right? But uh, 
you would it be better if you have just gone to the place and wake him up? Be specific about the event. So just say that some of the students were not paying attention. Who? When? Why do you say so? So be very specific. Alright? Where possible, use question. It's not so threatening. Right? Would you like to try this? It's better than try this. Right? Hmm. Make suggestions that are achievable. You know that. You know you can come up with suggestions, but even you yourself can't do it. So, come up with suggestions which are achievable, realistic. And you know that that class, is, you have a lot of problem cases, dyslexic student, or you have some of this uh, hyperactive student. Right? Certain things you can't do means you can't do. Don't even try to say, you must make sure that he, he does his homework. How? So you're giving a suggestions which, can, which may not be achievable. Even you can't do it. That's when, you see, you lose the respect of the evaluator. Show me, you know, show me. You can't do it, and then you ask me to do it. That's where the, the trust is not there anymore. So for peer coaching, you don't have sort of situation to happen. All right? We are helping one another. What you can do, I should be able to do. What I'm able to do, maybe I can coach you to be able to do it as well. Right? Okay. Now at this juncture, we would like to watch this film, this, this classroom. Right? But then there will be a few more slides after this. Now before we watch this, I'll just give you a brief history of, uh, of, the, of the film. Alright? So that you know what it is about. And I'm not too sure whether you want to take a break after this, yes. right? After I've given you this, this uh, description, you take a short break, then we start to watch the film, and then there will be no more break until we finish, all right? Now, this film, this, this, this particular video is about one teacher teaching poetry in an American classroom, all right? Now, when you teach poetry or students to write poetry and so on, it's something very dull, dull, right? The moment you mention the word, for example, you want to go to the classroom, today we are going to learn poetry. What will the students do? They will cringe. You know? Not only here, even in America, it's the same. So, now, this teacher knows that this is a topic which is very dry, which is difficult to teach, all right? So what she's trying to do is to help them appreciate what they are going to learn by putting in certain activities to introduce poetry to, to the student. Now, when you watch the film afterwards, you will notice the change in the attitude of student. When she started talking, oh, today we'll do some, you know, this and that, and you can see the face of the student. But as the lesson develops, you find that the students are participating. <coughs> All right. Now this is only possible if the student, if the teacher knows the content very well, knows what material to use, arrange her resources, and also at the same time, the teacher is able to create this interest throughout the lesson. So right from the beginning till the end of the lesson, the students are engaged. Now, if you were to, if you were to be the teacher and asked to teach poetry, what would some of us have done? The tendency is to go in the first time teaching poetry, you tell the class, today we're going to start learning poetry. All right, I want you to turn to page 425. That's the first poetry there. Now, let's start reading it. Right? This will be somebody who is not innovative. And that's why the students will be, huh? Oh, you know, things like that. And after reading, now I want you to write something similar. Can you start constructing a, a, po a poem like that? That's where the students will be put off. Okay? Now, for this particular teacher, what she does is, she started off by getting the students to like this particular poem by T.S. Eliot. The cats. Have you seen the musical Cats? Have you heard the song Memories? Yes. Right? Now this Memories is supposed to be sung by the old cat. 
right? Very glamorous during her younger days. Now that she's old and retired, just like me retiring, right? That she recalls her glorious day as a very sophisticated cat, right? If you have seen this musical, this musical is where, you know, the actors are all dressed up like cats with whiskers and then and then this when this poor this this girl, I think it's Isabella, this cat came up, she was just somewhere standing right on top there singing, recalling her glorious day. That's why this song is memory. Right? When she was walking in this alleyway with all the lights in the morning and things like that. So now for this particular poem, it's not about this, uh, this, 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 this old cat. It's about this cat called the cavity, the mystery cat. Now, this, this particular poem is, is a poem on cats, right? He has alien. It's about different types of cats. Each poem is about one type of cat. <coughs> All right. Now, this particular one that they're going to learn is about this cat. Called mystery cat, the cavity, the mystery cat, and this cat will, will get into all sorts of nonsense, committing crimes and things like that. So this poem is about the crime that this cat committed, the action of the cat. Right? So now what this teacher does is she understands this poem so well that she will start, first of all, she'll get the students to talk about cats. Instead of talking about the poem, she talks about cats, do you like cats and things like that, and then getting responses from them. At first, when they told the student that it's going to be some a poem, the student would just put off. But then when she started talking about cats, they started coming in. They don't feel threatened at all, and they participate. Now, once they start to participate, then she leads them on to the other things. Like, you know the cats have got different personalities. Ask them, you know the experience of cats? You may have cats at home. Sometimes some of the cats are very temperamental. Some are very naughty. And then, you know, she started, when she started talking about cats, the students would just talk about anything about the cats. But then the poem is about the temperamental, you know, the temperament of the cats, and then leading to the activities. She just now switched them to the personality. You know, asking them, you know, we have cats that are quite arrogant sometimes. How do they behave? That one of the boys will show the text is like that. Don't even look at you, walk like that, you know? So all that, the students have forgotten that it's about poem. So the students are participating. Then after that, they say, okay, now this particular po poet has actually written this about cats, and his name is this and that, and then gave some history about this, this, this particular book, the book of the poems about cats. Then after that, say today, you have to start with that. Now, it's in your book, page what, 125 or whatever. Then I will read it first. And then as I read, I want you to follow. Then after that, get the students to read. And she also told them that these particular books of uh, the poem, poems of cats have been so popular, it has been made into a Broadway musical. Right, telling them a bit about the musical. Now, you're going to listen to this song as well. So this song is about the cavity, the mystery cat. So they listen. Then after that, instead of asking them to write the poem, what they should do? She will ask them to sing. sing. This is great, using their creativity. Poetry writing is creativity. Now I want you to draw a poster. Because this cavity cat, the cavity, the mystery cat, has committed so many crimes. Right? So in America, uh, you know, the, 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 the Western, the Western movies, what happens? The criminals, what happens? They are wanted. Wanted. That poster. So the answer, now you are playing a poster of this wanted cat. Now what would you put into the poster? Everything you can get from the poem. First of all, about the description, about the, the appearance of the cat. Now, so referring them back to the poetry and make the poem again. Right, now where do you get this character? Is it tall and deep? Uh, which line was that? So they tell her. Then slowly you're getting back them into the, getting them into the, the poem. Then after that, I also want you to list down the crimes committed. 
So where do you get all this crime? Okay, it is from the of the poem. And you can see throughout from the beginning to the end of the lesson, the students were engaged. Alright? Now as you watch this afterwards, I want you to look at your worksheet C. where we have actually divided this evaluation sheet into three major portions. First one is for domain A, domain 2, and domain A. Domain 1, domain 2, and domain 3. Alright? Now, for domain 1, you need to get the information from the pre-observation interviews of the first. Right? And I've listed down some of the questions that you normally ask so that to illustrate whether the teacher knows the student, whether the teacher knows the subject matter, whether the teacher has selected the right instructional goals, whether the teacher has planned the activities according to the level of the level of abilities of the student. Right? And the first part of the film will show you that pre Free observation conference, which will take about something like 10 to 15 minutes, where she talks about different aspects of it the student, the content, the activities, the objective, and the act for evaluation as well. Right? It's covered. Then the second part of the film will show you the actual lesson itself. Then you will assess it based on domain 2 and domain 3. But again, not all the components you need to gather evidence. Now, if you can, as you watch this afterwards, just jot down some evidence like what you have done earlier. Now, the moment you jot down the evidence, you're more or less limiting it to the components. Right? On a piece of paper or even on that piece of paper, take take short notes. Alright? Now, what we'll do is we'll take a 10 minutes break. Then when we come back, we'll watch the film. And after watching the pre-observation conference, we'll stop a while to talk about it. Then we go on to the, the actual lesson. So, be back here by 3.25.
the way she was talking about the student, very knowledgeable about the students because to her, she has been teaching this class for about one, one year, close to a year, so she knows them well, what they can do and what they can't do. All right, and now also she knows the topic, the content, you see poetry is something which all the students think. Then having been aware of this fact, what is she going to do about it so that the teaching becomes more effective? Right? So she's not gonna she's not gonna be very ambitious. The goal is for them to be able to appreciate the poem. Appreciate poetry. So by starting off this as the first activity, hopefully the next activity until the end of the year will be more smooth. When they actually do poetry and then maybe eventually be able to compose their own poetry, their own poems. Right, actually the pre-observation conference is, was actually very good, very powerful. She was able to describe every aspect of it. Right? The domain one was fully covered. Alright, and selecting, means if you were to be writing this uh, summary, if you choose the selection of instructional goal, which was very clear and very precise, and then she identified goals which are achievable based on her knowledge of the student and also based on the knowledge of the content. And then there's the pedagogy or the methods that she's going to use is also appropriate. Right? Step by step. Okay? Now, maybe the next part can be a bit uh, boring as well because she started reading about the T.S. Eliot and so on a little bit. Then after that, they show you the part of the lesson where the students do all these activities and so on. But bear with me because the lesson is actually very interesting. And just look at what you look for. This is the instruction itself. Domain 3 we are going into now. Domain 2 and Domain 3. Right? Now, for domain two, what do you look for? Culture for learning. That means the rapport must be there. You look at, you know what happens when the students enter the classroom? You also look at the management of classroom procedures. Where do the students get the material? All right? Then after that, how she, she sort of uh, entertain the students without making them been fearful of, you know, participating. Then after that, during the instructions itself, right, what do you look for? Domain three, what do you look for? Learning. Engaging students in learning. All right, you look from that perspective. First one, domain two, you look at culture for learning. Domain three, you look for engagement of students in learning. And then from there, you look from that perspective, what are the students doing and what did the teacher do so that the students are engaged in learning? Alright? Ready? You want to stretch yourself a little bit before, before we start? Okay, now go in three, okay, and two. Very, very cool. Okay. Okay. 
announcement the PA system right? announcement came through the PA system but what happens to her? she continues to teach continues to read so what will be the effect? either students will not be able to hear or the students will be is, is distracted all right so so you may want to put down in your evidence pa came on teacher continues teaching you are not saying it's good or bad but the evidence is pa on public address system came on teacher continues to teach that will be your evidence but whether it's good or bad we we'll talk about it during the post observation conference that we draw your conclusion this is how you gather evidence something happens quickly jot it down So, encouraging them so that everyone can 
listen to your poetic skills. So you can notice that while the others are doing the rest are still engaged. Thank you. 
And then the other one will come in and compliment that scene. So they study that paragraph and they come up with a... I don't know. It's, it's a different, another, another approach. approach. So there's only, not only one... Then, then by doing that, after that, the teacher, the teacher can, can give her input on the students' can can guess okay, what what they you see in that paragraph. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when you go back this evening, right, at least try to write a few sentences so that you don't forget about the evidence. Alright? Okay? Now, if, if we have this sort of framework where there is common consensus, alright? When we have common consensus, what good teaching is, and then when you do your observation, when you write your report, most of the time, your report will be consistent, whether it's written by you, or by you, or by you. Because you have certain reference to refer to. Right? And when that happens, then we are saying, then what we can say is, that is evaluator reliability. Now, this evaluator reliability will only happen if all the evaluators are trained using the same framework. Alright? So, what is reliability? Reliability is supposed to be similarity of conclusion or there is consistency. If you think that it is good, if the, let's say, in terms of preparation, Right? In terms of the knowledge of students, in terms of knowledge of content, in terms of knowledge of the instructional goals, right? everybody will more or less be saying the same thing. And in terms of putting a level of performance to that particular element, all of you will more or less choose the same level. If you have been trained using the same framework and you have a blueprint which is based on the discussion of everybody. Right? And when that happens, then we say that there is reliability. Alright? And this reliable consistency is actually a function of consensus building. The observers must actually come together and come to a consensus what constitutes good teaching. In good teaching, we look for this, we look for that, so that when we see good teaching, we can talk about it. If we see not so good teaching, we also know what else can be done to make it good? All right, that can only happen if there is consensus amongst the evaluator as well as the teachers. All right, and for that to happen, there must be constant practices. All right, that is why you move towards making peer evaluation and peer coaching part of your activities is actually moving towards this for professional development. Right? And when, when there is this sort of inter colleagues observation and inter peer coaching, there is a lot of professional learning taking place. Alright? When the learner learns, then it is good. It must be mental work learning takes place, alright? So, we say that there is professional learning. What is professional learning? Right? There must be always be reflection on practice, domain 4. You must reflect on your practice all the time, and there must be collaborative efforts amongst the colleagues. That's why your peer, again your peer evaluation, Right, your peer, what is that that you use? Peer, peer assessment, no, peer observation. Huh? Coaching, right? There must be this uh, collaboration. And what is, uh, what is the other thing which is more important is also you must be sincere, because you must be able to assess yourself. Where am I? Am I that good? Or do I still need to learn more? There must be constant self-assessment. Only if you self-assess, you only then only then you will want to improve. Only then you can improve if you want to improve. All right. If all the time you feel that I'm okay, I'm good, nothing wrong, then you'll be stagnant at that level. Right. And there must also be some inquiry, self-directed, knowing that I'm not so good. What can I do to improve? 
when you have this self-directed inquiry, then you want to carry out some experiment in the classroom so that it can be better. Now, when you do that, you're actually carrying out some form of action research. In fact, for this sort of training, my intention is to move from one level to the next. Eventually, the last training will be on action research, where you can do research by yourself so that you can improve your own teaching and your own performance in the classroom. All right, that was the ultimate aim, building up this group of teachers who are very professional. In the end, you will want to conduct your own research to improve yourself. And the other one, of course, is this sort of assessment must be formative, which I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the talk. All right? Your, your, your performance on day one and your performance on day 10 should be different. Because along the way, you have learned, you have changed, and there is this sort of, it's formative along the way. All right, if you base your assessment on just one observation and hang on to that till the end of the year, it's not accurate. It's not a true reflection of your performance. So if you want to do this evaluation, there are five things that, these are five golden rules. First of all, start with a defensible definition of good teaching so that everybody knows what good teaching is. Secondly, differentiate the process of evaluation for beginning experience and teachers at least. Right? Depending on your level of proficiency, the training will happen to be slightly different. The observation for a beginning teacher, the observation for an experienced teacher will happen to be different. What we are looking for will be different. Right? For a beginning teacher, you will need to give more input to help the teacher to grow. Just like the, the, the swimmer who doesn't know how to swim is being thrown to the deep end of the pool. So what help do you need to give? There are somebody who can already swim so well, do you still need to give help? No. You will see what help can this person give to the others. Alright? Number three, always base your observation on evidence. Alright? Collect evidence from your observation before you come up with any evaluation. It's based on evaluation, based on observation and evidence. Alright? And the other thing is when there is observation, peer coaching, make sure that the observation leads to teacher learning. If there is no teacher learning happening, teachers don't learn at all, just observe for the sake of observing, don't do it. The whole purpose is at the end of the day, there is learning taking place, professional learning. Alright, lastly, in order for this to work, you must involve all the stakeholders, meaning the teachers, the administrators, even, I would say, the, the students. But, Especially in the case of making a decision, it must involve both the administrators and the teachers. <coughs> Alright, to come up with this sort of blueprint and whatever. It's not just decided by one person. And that sort of system will not work because it is your system, not our system. And you want us to use that system, it is should be our system. Alright, so these five rules, if there is going to be this thing called Coach, uh, what kind of peer coaching using evaluation and observation that all of you have to be involved in deciding what instrument and how you will use it. Alright? Now to implement it, you must always look at what is the purpose of wanting to do it. If you want to do it for the sake of giving bonuses and increment, forget it. Use the whole system. If your purpose is to help teachers to grow, help teachers to be more competent, yes, do it. Alright, so you, when you want to implement it, ask yourself, what is it for? Is it just for name only? What will the teachers benefit from it? If the answer is what you want, go for it. Alright? When you do this, you make sure that there is teacher professional development and teacher growth. Not that teacher grows better, teacher grows professionally, becomes more professional, more effective. And if you can, 
because you have started with a framework for teaching, make this a part of the framework for teaching. All right, that is how I've been developing it. It's part of it. You link one to the other. And lastly, the end result is there will be effective teaching, students learn, learning becomes meaningful for the children, learning is fun. Then it's worthwhile doing it. If these observations don't lead to fun learning by the students because you have improved, there's no point in doing it. Alright? So, any question you'd like to, to ask? No? Okay. So, we have come to the end of the workshop. I'd like to thank you for your participation. I know you have been uh, very busy and very committed. You have been going through what, two or three weeks of training. And this is the second week. It is in the middle. Some of you have been three weeks. All right? You can see the tiredness in you. All right? It's more tiring than teaching, correct? And because I've done this for, this is my fourth day, I also begin to feel the, the stress as well, you know? Anyway, I'd like to thank you for your cooperation and also your participation. And for those of you who have been with me, with me, with me with, been with me for the last three years, right? Thank you for your friendship and thank you for your participation. And just to let you know, this is my last assignment for the group. I will not be doing this anymore, all right? Because I've retired from the college. So I will no longer be doing this. And maybe somebody else will take over. My original plan was to take you through right up to the last stage where you can do action research, right? To improve your teaching. But anyway, there will be people who will be able to do this as well. So it has been fun working with you. I know that all of you are very committed, carry on the good work, and thank you. All right? That is my email. All right. That is my name without a surname. Just at yahoo.com. But if you email me, please let me know who you are. Right. I was a teacher at KDU, Street KDU, and things like that. Where I can, I will try to reply. Yes. I don't check my email all the time. Now that I'm retired. Please return the book. All right. So thank you. Enjoy your